Hello, my name is Jan Hovalne, Lawa in China, and welcome to my podcast and welcome to the beautiful Stockholm. The man, the myth, the legend. Jan Oivaldner, welcome to the podcast. Your Thank you podcast. Much. Thank you very much. Let's start off with you as a table tennis player. What has and what is table tennis to you? Yeah, I started to, to play when I was very young so with my brother. So I played so many years, so it means a lot. And of course, it uh, it was my work in the end. And uh, I don't... The most important was that it was fun with, to play table tennis. So it was the it was why I started to play in the beginning. So that's the reason with what's happened with table tennis for me. And today, still playing, still interested. <laughs> yes, I'm still playing a little bit. Practice uh, one times a week. I start again now for some years ago to play a little bit. It's a lot of fun, and also to, to start with some new things like the podcast and my. Valne Cup tournament, so it will be a lot of fun for uh, in the future now. Looking back at your long and impressive career, who would you say you know top three people having a positive impact on your life as a table tennis player? Oh, it's, I think it's of course uh, my father, mother, my brother. I think this was the the family was always the biggest. Uh, most important thing for me was the family always. So I think this three, and especially with my brother, he was two years old, uh, older than me, and he could always show me the way and uh, how to handle different difficult things and everything. So I think he was very important for my career. Still playing against your brother in table tennis? Yeah, sometimes he's practiced much more than me now. So he's <laughs> <it's> better. <laughs> uh, no, he's not better. But the handicap is going down now. Before he had higher handicap, now it's a little bit lower so maybe four or five balls before to 11 and we have a, some fun matches now so it's nice to play again and we are i'm in my club in, in stockholm sportwagen to play once a week and uh, i have some rest for nearly five six years ago since i stopped to play in my club my last match and now i think it's a lot of fun to play again and also my my body is a little bit better now than maybe two one two years ago i agree you look great Thank you. <laughs> uh, but looking back at your many achievements, what would you say, in your own words, are maybe some of the the best that you you think? I think, of course, when I won uh, uh, world championships without losing one set, twenty one zero, it was one of my best tournaments ever. And of course, you have to say Olympics, ninety two in Barcelona. I only lost one set in this tournament, so I think to play. On this high level, in in the two biggest tournaments you can play in, it's fantastic, and uh, I'm very proud that I could do it in this. Uh, when you play in so big tournaments, if you play in smaller tournaments, it can happen for a lot of players. But for me, it was fantastic feeling to to do it in the for me Olympics, maybe the most important tournament and the biggest one, maybe is uh, World Championships. And that was in 2020. No, <laughs> that was in 1990. Seven. 1997. 1997 uh, in, in Manchester so yeah. against Samsonov and uh, Olympics 92, some years ago. So with all those <laughs> gold medals and achievements, a natural follow-up is your greatest rivals. Oh, because I played so long time, they say in China that I played with six different generations. So probably... Some Chinese, of course, is there. Then you have some Swedish player, person up again, Lind and everyone from them. So they was also great players. And you have some also from Europe, like I play Gatia and you have Rosco Primora. They have many players from Europe. But for me, the toughest one was always to play against the Chinese. And you you had many good and big games I had with Ligo Liang, Kong Linghi, and now. I was unlucky that I could not play only one time with Malong for him because he's one of the greatest in the sport. So, but I, I had a chance to play with him once. But I played, a lot, of course, many different generation in China. 
And you get, you you got to play t- uh, with Malong in your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it was easy. <tasty>. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about you as a player, and and of course you understood and still understands the game, of course. But uh, the arena that was when you played uh, and now, what would you say is the development of table tennis from when you were active until now? I think, uh, of course, the table tennis is much faster now than uh, when I played. Uh, especially with the backhand side and also more powerful because it's also because of the ball. When they change the ball to 48 to 40 millimeters, it's, you need a lot of more power. The spin was gone. So I think for with the smaller ball, it was better for me because I, I had a different style. I played a lot of speed, spin variation and tactic was my biggest thing, I think, in table tennis. So when they change... It was a little bit uh, more powerful table tennis, and now you can see all the players playing nearly the same style. Before we have more different styles in table tennis, so yeah, it changed a little bit the sport. But also, I played good, even good with the big balls, so I cannot complain so much. So the 1997 version of uh, Waldner, how would he compete? You know, uh, today. Uh, I think, in, like in all sports, it's difficult to say between. Uh, when so many years ago, it's the same. If you go back, uh, big players, uh, t- tennis stars against the new one. Of course, the new one will win because uh, the de- development on the sport, development of the sport is always in all sports growing. So it's difficult to be I have a chance with the new players. But I think uh, most of what changes the backhand side. They are much stronger than uh, they are more powerful now than before. Mm. So of course this. It's going to be difficult to play with a new generation. So you beat them. That's good to know. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, and then we talked about development, uh, and I know you got a lot of plans. But where do you see table tennis develop for the next couple of years? Yeah, I think it looks good now because we start also with our tournament, won the cup, and we try to make the sport be much bigger now. It's our goal for the future. So. I hope this can help table tennis to grow in not not only in Europe, in Asia, all over the world. And that's our goal. So it's very important for for the future with the, with Bandit Cup. I think it can be really good for for the sport to improve and also for television and for new things. I think we have some good things is coming up. I know it's uh, it's great things coming up, um, but you also created this wonderful app called Play Valner, which is part of the Valner Cup. And again, you give profit back to, you know, table tennis communities all over the world. But you also have a podcast, which we are talking about now, placed in the app. Can you yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you talk about there, your guests? Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun because uh, with a new generation, I don't know them so well. But uh, in the podcast, I start to know them really good after... You have some very young players from France, Lebrun, is fantastic guys, so this one you have to watch. And also with the big superstars now like Malong and Wang and everyone is there. And you have some Asian players like also Japanese player. And also from the girls we have some players. So it's a lot of different style and maybe five, six from Europe is coming up, five, six from Asia. And also we have Calderano from Brazil. Also a very interesting guy. So I think it's uh, a lot of good things is coming up with the podcast. And uh, we're going to see in the podcast that the um, Lebrun brothers are challenging you in, in trick shots and, and everything. And uh, yeah, we let the, the, the yeah. viewers see the result of that. Yeah. But you challenge uh, your guests in a volume challenge. Just quickly, just give us a teaser on, on what we can see there. Uh, I think uh, it's like... 30 seconds, we have to play on one table with some <laughs> new things on the table. I don't have to say something more about this, but uh, we have a challenge to, to play the ball and it's not going to be easy. We play for 30 seconds. I, I go together with, with one guy and we try to beat the record. We will see who is the best one to play double with me. <laughs> so can you uh, expose any secret from the the Volman challenge on uh, I think who the, did best? And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's close one with uh, with five yeah. six. So it's <laughs> really it's maybe one or two balls more. But I think also the challenge is with the bounce on the 
what we have done with the table now. So it, the bounce is really difficult. So you have to be full concentrate. And I think this is a funny thing for the future also for young kids to try pl to play on this. Maybe a handicap you can give your brother next time you play, right? Yeah, with this one, even you can beat me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it'd be... And it's also quite relaxed, I think, also. So it's very important. It's not... Uh, but... Uh, not so serious, but all the players who have been there want to to win this contest also. So right. we will see what's going on later. I, I think uh, on behalf of all the fans watching and uh, and me personally as a, as a fan, uh, I hope uh, and look forward to see you in the the qualifications for the World Championships yeah. in your comeback. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you for your time. Looking yeah. forward to the podcast and of course the Baldwin Cup. Okay, Thanks. thank you.